Yeah, so um, today I'm really going to touch on how the Alinea performance tools can uh, help get a better performance out of your code. And today we're going to largely focus on using our tool performance reports to help your configuration with uh, using OpenFoam in particular. But going to keep it fairly high level and cover our performance tools of, of how they can help you in general and help you with other CFD uh, tools and applications that you're using. And also, as Andrew mentioned, um, we like to uh, touch on kind of best practices, particularly when optimizing your code. Of HPC in general has become much more progressive of using good techniques, um, good software engineering methodology for best practices, and we're really trying to not just uh, create our tools in a form to enable that, but also to kind of show and illustrate in, in the workflow. So here's just some of our showcase customers that we like to share that have been using our tools specifically for CFD-related work um, for quite some time with our, with our tools. Okay, so at a high level, um, Alinea has been around for about 15 or 20 years. We started um, with our tool BDT, a debugger. Uh, we expanded that uh, many years back to include our source code profiler map, uh, integrated environment for both debugging and optimizing at a source code level. And then a little more recently, we introduced uh, linear performance reports, will be, which will be a large focus today, which is able to, uh, enables you to kind of optimate, optimize at an application level to get the best performance. Um, also, not, it's not really a product, but technical support. Alinea uh, does an outstanding job of supporting our customers um, be successful with our products uh, in both the optimization and debugging tools. There's a lot of open source and somewhat free tools out there, but having good, uh, good support helping you be successful is really part of the, the product suite. So why optimize? Um, this sounds a little simplistic, but HPC has been actually a little late to the game, if you will, in really doing a good job and focusing on optimization. And I like to think of it as, you know, what are your goals? You're undertaking a project. What is the goals of this and why do it? Um, faster simulation, that's pretty clear, getting to your results uh, quicker. Um, lower cost per simulation, um, enabling more utilization of the uh, resource that you have, get better throughput on your cluster in general and greater confidence in design, uh, particularly important for the, uh, the end scientist that's uh, publishing results or making conclusion about this, and getting better precision, uh, larger meshes with more precision. Um, so I really like to see, to look at that as, you know, why are we doing that as the goals? And then the plan is kind of what we call a performance roadmap, and the idea is, you know, once we know why we're proceeding with this is, to use the roadmap as kind of a guide of how to proceed through your optimization process. And the first step, which is most important, whether you're using our tools or manually optimizing your code, is analyze and understand the performance before you jump into the code. Um, it's so easy to think that you know where the problem is and invest time modifying sections of the code or modifying your configuration and setup and it's really not the root cause. So first and foremost, always gather data and performance reports can help you get a really good high level picture of what's going on. And then the roadmap kind of follows a sequence and it really is a sequence in optimization. For example, in HPC, the first level of issues, if you will, the first set of likely problems will often have to do with IO. So, you know, looking at vectorization before you've made sure that you're doing a decent job at I.O. is often not a, a fruitful path. So the performance roadmap provides a nice kind of series of operations to how to get your best performance out of your code, whether it's just a changing the configuration in a deployment or actually digging into the source code. And this will be part of the package that we follow up with uh, after the demonstration. Our marketing guys will send some follow-up materials that will include this. So performance reports. Uh, performance reports is a single page output, um, both in HTML format, which is uh, convenient for, for reviewing in your browser, or in a flat text format, which is uh, amenable to post-processing or integrating with a regression testing type of operations. So the single page report uh, really focused on identifying configuration problems, uh, those type of issues, and be able to track behavior of your applications 
over time. Um, in fact, in our new version, we're providing hooks to integrate the output of reports into regression test systems uh, such as Jenkins. So not just for uh, developers, but also for uh, system administrator, system owner type folks that are focused on trying to get the, the best throughput on their system. Uh, very low overhead, um, typically well under 5%. Um, no recompilation or instrumentation necessary. Um, if you want to run performance reports at your usual deployed level of optimization, uh, just as you were running in production. So for today, I want to focus on using performance reports uh, with OpenFOAM. So OpenFOAM is a uh, open source uh, free utility CFD solver. And we're going to use uh, OpenFOAM's InterFOAM solver for solving a dam break problem, but it would apply very similar to any other run that you were going to use. So starting performance reports is very easy. You just prefix the run with perf report. So your existing MPI run, MPI exec, prefix that with perf report. And here's the command I used on my system. And it will run and generate, generate your results as usual, um, outputs as usual. And then in addition, this uh, HTML and text format file for review. And this also works within batch systems. So if you're using something like PBS, uh, all you have to do is modify the existing run command within your batch submission script, and it will run as usual. So let me just play the video to illustrate the problem that we're solving. So this is uh, solving a dam break problem, and this is part of the distribution that I'll show you at the end of, of the sample that I'm using. So it's kind of fun to do that as a you know, supporting scientists doing this work as a computer person. It's nice to have an understanding, to have a picture of the science that we're doing. But a nice thing about performance reports is it's really at a system application level, so you don't need to have an internal understanding of the application, a deep understanding of the science. A lot of our customers use the product in the context of they'll have a benchmarking system-oriented person helping get the best performance out of their application without having to really dig into and understand the underlying science in detail. Okay, so let's uh, review the uh, the output of the run that we had. So the first ran, first run that I did was um, four processes. Here we go, four processes on one node. So let me just go through the uh, the interface in a little more detail. So at the top, we have a little in, little bit of information about the run, um, the physical configuration some information about the system, the time we ran. And then to the right of that, a little three-axis plot, a radar plot, where at a glance we can kind of see the nature of the run. And then at a high level, um, how much time is being spent within compute, um, MPI communication, and I.O. And if you had a um, GPU accelerator, we also support those, and it would break compute down by those categories. And then some lower level details of time spent within compute, uh, MPI, I.O., time within threading, memory, and uh, energy. And also if you had the accelerator, it would break that down. Now one thing we can do in performance reports that's not quite as easy in typical profiling methods is from the value and ratios of the overall results, we can apply some heuristics of what is going on and give some kind of objective advice of what might be able to run. So for example, in this run, we can see we have an extremely high ratio of compute to MPI communication. Uh, one of my favorites is uh, within the uh, compute section, extremely low percentage of vectorized operations. And within performance reports, we can detect that we're running on a modern AVX capable machine and spot that that might be an area of interest to look into a little further. Okay, so from these high-level results, um, it gives us kind of some insights, some details of 
what we can improve. So for our open foam run, um, some of the opportunities might be, um, are we running at the right workload balance? Are we uh, splitting the workload correctly, optimally, for our cluster across the available resources? Um, has the current build been compiled appropriately? So in our results, we're getting extremely low vectorization. Um, maybe the default build does not use the best opportunity for our machine. Is there a better way to start start the solver or decompose our solution set? So performance reports can kind of give some hints of where to start with that. Um, still takes the, uh, the professional to find those opportunities and find the solutions, but at least we can uh, have a good starting point. So is my workload unbalanced? Um, so looking at the memory distribution, we can see that uh, there's a pretty good distribution of memory across the processes. So kind of as a rule of thumb, we can say if there's a good distribution of memory across your processes with a low RMS typically, um, it's probably pretty well done. So from this uh, output, we can see that we have good distribution, but we're not really using really, you know, a high percentage of the available memory. So can I improve processor usage? So we see that we're getting a lot of processor usage, and often when the first thing we think when we hear, oh, high compute time, that's good. We want our codes to be computing, but it's important to look that it's a good compute time. Um, is it actually doing floating point operations, um, or is it in memory or branching that's not producing results? And so from performance reports, we can see that we have an extremely high percentage of time spent in memory access. And when this is the case, it's often an a indication that we might have an opportunity to improve the throughput by changing the spatial and temporal locality of memory, and that can often easily be done uh, by changing the number of processes. So let's, uh, we're going to uh, rerun the same example, but with eight processes. So let's uh, go to the uh, result file first. So we have eight processes, still one node. A little bit of change of time in compute. And kind of a nice workflow with performance reports. When you have various results like this, it becomes very easy to tab between the various results to do comparisons. Okay, so we can see that our, our runtime now is down from 171 seconds to 134 seconds. So with a very simple switch, we made a pretty good improvement in the entire throughput of the run. But let's uh, make sure we look through the details of each subset and looking for further opportunities. And this is kind of the workflow for optimization in general. And particularly when you're using performance reports or MAP, is you find a first kind of low-level issue, and you improve that, and it will often uncover secondary issues. And this is part of the reason that uh, it's important to kind of follow the sequence that we recommend in the performance roadmap, and that the magnitude of the opportunities tends to be in the sequence that we uh, outline. So let's look at I.O. As, as we recall, that's like step two or three on the performance roadmap. And we can now see that uh, the write rate is very low. And the entire throughput. So let's go to, I'm sorry, back to two, two nodes. So we're going to use eight process against two nodes. And let's just have an out, look at the output from that. So eight processes, two nodes. And the write rate is looking quite a bit better. But our entire throughput time has gone up. So 131, back up to 177, so actually worse than our four process one node configuration. So what other experiments could we try? So at this point, with some very simple experiments, we've been able to see different performance characteristics within our open foam setup. 
So for your given machine, what is the uh, best scale? So I was just running this on something of a toy cluster where I only had a couple of nodes, and even with that very small set of resources, I could see very different behaviors. So for your setup, um, you know, maybe trying it to significantly larger scales, um, dimension of the uh, meshes within the open foam configuration, um, energy usage. So a, a kind of a fun new feature within both performance reports and our source code profiler map is being, being able to look at energy usage across your run, both at a node level and at a process level. And this is becoming much more efficient as we're moving to next generation machines and increasing power costs. Um, I work a lot with large government labs and it's definitely the accepted wisdom that the uh, codes that are going to survive at generation N plus one or N plus two um, are going to make consideration of good memory usage. So it's interesting to start looking at it now. So the MPI rates that we saw across all of our runs weren't as good as they could be. Even on my toy system, those numbers were relatively low. So uh, looking into how we've configured uh, open MPI might require going to our system administrator and seeing that things are, are set up correctly. So that's kind of a whirlwind tour of how to use performance reports to do some experiments very quickly and easily conduct experiments of different configurations of your code to see you know, what is optimal for your problem on your system. And we could also use a map for looking into detail. So we saw some vectorization issues. And um, I did this uh, presentation similarly about a month or two ago. And I was amazed how many people aren't just using OpenFoam out of the box, but are interested in bringing up the source code and seeing if they can find opportunities within the, within the source code themselves for improving it. And um, using our source code profiler, Linea Map, in addition to performance reports can help with that. And so here's some kind of follow-up uh, materials. Uh, we have a free trial of performance reports and our tools forge available on our web page, fully functioning setup of uh, the tools. Um, some materials on CFD, we work with a lot of clients in the CFD space, both commercial and government labs in Europe and the U.S. And then just some follow-up information on OpenFoam itself with the dam break example illustration that we used. So that's the, the heart of the presentation of what I had. Um, I really encourage you to give it a try yourself on your setup. I think the, the real fruitfulness is um, with your code on your system, your actual cluster, being able to conduct these experiments very quickly. You can see here in out the order of 20 minutes, uh, covered several different experiments, seeing some insights about how OpenFoam was running on my cluster. And even uh, on a much more sophisticated, much more realistic system, conducting these experiments is, is very, very simple, very quick. So that's the bulk of what I had to cover. We've uh, allocated some time for questions. If you have a question, if you could please uh, type it into the, uh, the chat window and Andrew will read that back for us.